Welcome everybody. I'm Dennis Yu. I built the analytics of the search engine long time ago that you guys may have used called Yahoo. So a bunch of us were agency owners and we want to grow our agency and we want to help our clients grow. And dollar a day, something we've used for the last 14 years, we spent a billion dollars on it with a B, even in inflation money, that's still a lot of money. It's really easy how these concepts work, but I'm going to show you something that you might not have seen before in ways to apply it that you can do right now. That's actually pretty easy. So I'm going to go to my Google photos. I want you guys to pick a city, put into the chat, any city in the world. So when I do a search for Vancouver, I'm going to see some of my favorite places to eat where I've taken pictures. For example, I spoke at the Traction Conference, you can see here, and this is automatically being categorized by Google, right? Let's see, Marcia said New Orleans or Madrid. What's happening is that I'm taking pictures and videos on my cell phone, ideally like one minute videos. Why is I'm not even spelling that properly? Let's see what else we said. Detroit, Fairfax, Virginia says Bradley, Prague. Let's see, I was in Prague just a few months ago. And look, this is King Wenceslas Square. This is the main, it's kind of cold out there, you can see. And then what I did was I made a series of one minute videos. This is the Prague Castle or on the, the, the tower, listen to this. Editing videos sucks. Just ask my friend here, Charles, who built Prague here in 1350, and he built the Prague Castle back there. Upload your one minute videos. Our team will handle all of it. Imagine all you have to do is make the videos. We'll do the editing. Come check it out. You're going to love all the headaches we're going to save you from having to do. See, isn't that neat? So here in Prague, we're making a series of these videos and you can see on the right side, it's tagged December 1st, 2021. And it's here in Prague and it's right across the bridge. See where the red dot is. And a lot of you guys might be doing this instead of taking pictures. Anytime you would take a picture, I want you to take a video. In this case, I'm going to download this video here. I'm going to then push it. You see, it's right here. It's got this weird name, IMG0944. I'm going to push it in the D script and I'm going to call this Prague one minute video. But I made a bunch of these just because I was motivated. I thought, you know, why not We're waiting for the guide to tour guide to show up. Let's just make a quick little video. Descript is my favorite tool, by the way. I'm gonna show you all sorts of magical things you can do. So I'm going to, got too many windows that are open here. Watch this. I'm just gonna drag it in. And now it's being transcribed automatically. The sound is being cleaned up. Now you saw that I was using a cell phone. So the sound isn't very good, but it's being automatically cleaned up. Now while, oh, this is almost done. So Prague was, not Prague, what am I saying? Descript was first made for podcasters to pull an audio, but now it's actually my favorite video editing tool because I don't need Loom or Otter or these other pieces. The reason why I'm showing you these short little videos is that the key to your growth is going to be, even if you're really good at ads, is gonna be in video. And if you don't have video, you can't run ads. That's just kind of the deal now. Look at this. Hey, Dennis, you here. Editing videos sucks. Just ask so, my friend here, Charles, who built Prague here. Okay, so now I've got this. I'm gonna add in some captions. So now we have that in the bottom here. And now I'm going to, I can add in all these other things, but for now, I'm just going to export this and export it as a video. But I could export to YouTube, I could export to Instagram, I could export to these other places. And now I'm gonna to go to Twitter and I'm gonna make a new tweet and say, I'll say this, instead of taking a picture, make a one minute video. Okay. And then I'm taking that thing that I made and there it is. And I can include a link to our course for one minute videos or dollar a day or whatnot, but I'm just trying to build some remarketing audiences. So I made a tweet just now. So the whole thing with dollar a day is when I've posted content anywhere, it could be Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. I need to boost it for a dollar a day to the audience that I want to be able to see it. 
So I go to my profile. You'll see, here's the one we just made a few seconds ago, but no one's gonna see it, right? Nobody's seen it. So dollar a day, which applies on every single network, is I'm gonna go to ads. I can do this on every single network. So I'll just do this on Twitter because we don't have a lot of time to go through each of the nuances of each of the networks. Create a campaign and I'm going for engagement. I could go for website clicks. I could go for video views, but engagement, even though it drives a higher CPC because you get more likes, shares and comments, it gives you more organic power. And in the end, it just gets you better leads, I find. We could drive native need, uh, native, native, native leads, hard for me to say this, right? And I think on Facebook and TikTok, those are probably the hottest things going right now. So you guys know we're spending a dollar a day, not 100. And I spend $7 in total because I'm going to test for a week and never take their auto bid because they always set it too high. So let's just say 20 cents, 22. Be careful because sometimes we'll put in $20 without looking, thinking you're putting in 20 cents. Now here's what's neat. I'm not using custom audiences. I'm not using these other sorts of interest audiences. I'm using lookalikes. So let's say that people that would probably know who I am if they're followers of Ryan Dice because I speak a lot of digital marketer and this sort of thing. And who are the other people that you'd want to target, let's say, that are in your community? Let's say you're an agency and you serve dentists, or maybe I want to target Russell Brunson. I can target anybody on Twitter, right? So I can target, let's see, who do we have here? Bradley Benner, are you on Twitter? There you are, yes, SEO, sir. local lead gen, right? So now I can target, it's basically like I have Bradley's list. And now I can look for recommendations, and look at all these other people that Twitter's recommending. So I might as well take Digital Marketer because Ryan Dice basically founded it. Anyway, I can go on and on and add more and more of these things. Then I'm gonna take the tweet that I just made here. And now I'm done. Now I've got my dollar day campaign running for seven days. Here's the audience targeting these three particular people or interests or organizations or what have you. And now I've launched a campaign. Isn't that cool? And let's take a look. It's gonna take a little while to for the ad to be approved, but now we know 49 people have seen it and somebody has engaged on it. Isn't that cool? Now imagine I'm an agency owner and I've got lots of different things that I wanna talk about. And I wanna turn them into web pages and I wanna rank for those on Google or maybe even pay for that. I might come in here and do something like this. So I'm gonna do a little camera recording here. I can choose the camera, I can use our studio. And what's, let me know in the chat, what's one topic maybe that you'd want to talk about as an agency owner or something you want to teach or something that's interesting. Painful thing I see is coaches that suck at lead generation. And you know why? It's because they put up a landing page, they hire some VA to put it together, they use their favorite software and they generate no leads. And the reason why is not technology. It's because you don't have high authority content. You need content that the people in your community care for. So if I'm coaching people in a particular area, then I need to have the figurehead or lighthouse of that area be able to have the relationship with me. I need to create content with that person. And that way, by the time they come to my offer, by the time they get to my landing page, they know who I am because they see who else that I'm working with. If you're not visible online with the people that you want to coach and the person that they respect the or with the organization that they respect, then your stuff is not going to convert. And that's my tip. Build your community. Don't just put landing pages up there hoping people are going to sign up for your stuff because you need to be seen and you just to boost it out there for a dollar a day. And um, most people can't um, talk uh, very clearly um, like, you know, and um, that's how people sound. And they're talking on their phones and they're talking on their laptops, which has terrible sound. Okay, so I made this, it's being transcribed right now. As Oob just said, I can use studio sound, that is correct. The speaker is me. I'm not gonna go into all the different features, but I'll just show you. When this thing is done transcribing, I'll be able to edit this video as easily as I can edit a Google Doc, and then I can turn it into an ad. So let's say I wanted to write a book Actually, I could have made a, a video saying, hey, if you're helping coaches, you need to have a book. So I'm 
with, with the guy who wrote the number one book on Facebook ads, Perry Marshall. We got a book coming out next month on TikTok ads. We hope that will be number one in the industry as well, too. So you build some authority. How do you build a book? Your bullet points, right? 10 bullet points, talk for five minutes each, transcribe it, turn it into a book. Literally, that's just a book, right? It doesn't have to be fancy. Instead of trying to get the book out, get a book out. And then all your leads, all the people you want to want to coach, you can say, hey, look, look at my book, right? I'd love to give you a copy of my book. Put in your email address, download it now, right? And then put it out there for a dollar a day, targeting whoever the main figurehead is of that industry that you want to go after. So maybe for coaching, you go after Tony Robbins or whatever niche of coaching that you have. You see, there's that's the power of dollar a day. And we have our dollar a day presentation and other pieces inside here, inside Flowster, if you want to look at some of the details. I just wanted to give you guys a taste of what it means to create content on any network. Do you have time for one more example? So most of you folks are on Facebook. And you can see right here, I'm on Facebook. I have a blue check. I have a couple thousand people that follow me. And I'm posting different sorts of things. Like about Descript, my favorite tool. And I get gifts. I love to post these gifts when people send me things, right? I'm publishing on Influencer. But this is me as a profile. This is not my page. A profile is a user profile. You don't have ads and analytics on it. So I have a page too. I have a business page that's called Dennis U that I can do ads and analytics on. I make lots of little one minute videos. I post lots of other sorts of stories and articles. So it looks personal. Look, I'm taking a cocoon oxygen bath. This was a couple days ago, right? This has nothing to do with digital marketing, but it has everything to do with digital marketing because I'm building relationships. Now, if we look at the videos that I've made, I've got lots of them. And a lot of these are cross posted by virtual assistants. And you'll see here that a lot of these little pro tips here, speaking of conferences, there's my buddy, Josh Nelson, who runs seven figure agency. I spoke at his conference. I bring other people up on stage. Here's Warren Whitlock here in the studio. So we have a website with a million uniques a month, free eBooks. So we have the number one eBook site on the planet. We have a five and a half million member email list. So that's kind of a nice little thing to have. So you can see there's all these different videos that I'm posting, but let me show you, let's see, where is my, I'll go to Creator Studio. But maybe you made a video that you posted on your public figure page that it gets a little traction for a day or two, but then it kind of dies off because that's what happens, right? On all the social networks is it's kind of there and then it just falls off. So what you do, is you use dollar a day to make sure that it continues to be seen by the audience that you want, even if this was a long time ago. So let me show you one that was kind of a long time ago. I told you the importance of making one minute videos that we boost for a dollar a day. So instead of me talking about it, you know what's more powerful? It's getting someone else to talk about it in an entertaining way, in a way that also has authority. We had, I asked Grant Cardone to make a series of videos. He made a dozen videos for me about different topics of which one of them is, how do you do a one minute video? And here's what we have. Hey guys, Dennis wanted me to send you this, uh, one best one minute tip. Bro, you gotta be authentic. You gotta be transparent. You gotta get people to attention. I'm like, Hey, <laughs> that's one way to get their attention. Now, if you're in a professional setting, uh, it might be more like make it a big claim. Okay. I guarantee you something you got to punch, you got to have a hook, you got to get excited. So, and let me just say this, all that being said, quantity, quantity beats quality. Don't kid yourself. You got to get out there a lot. Okay. Hey, you guys be great. 10 X everything thinking 10 X levels. And that dude you're working with, oh, oh De Dennis, you, He's a bad, bad man. You see what I do? I keep getting your attention. He's a bad, bad man. And that's my little girl right there. She a freak. <laughs> and that used to be grapefruit on my plate. <laughs> see what I'm doing? See what I'm doing? So that's a one minute video. And you see a thousand, hundred thousand people have seen it. And a bunch of people are looking at this. And the reason why I have Grant Cardone doing it is because Grant Cardone is better known than me. And he's known, arguably, as the world's number one social media influencer. 
So I have him promoting our stuff, right? So I'm, so who do you think I'm targeting? So I'm running dollar a day against this. This was a few years ago, you can see. This is three years ago we made this video and it's still building traffic. So who do you think I'm targeting? Yeah, yeah that's right, Rashida. So what I'm targeting Grant's followers, what does that do for the algorithm? So I have Grant Cardone content to Grant Cardone, click through rate, view through rate, cost per view, all of that the, is super well. So I'm getting three views for a penny. So then I can then retarget that audience. So now Grant's community knows who I am. And instead of me saying, hey, I'm Dennis Yu, and I created the one minute video and dollar a day method, I'm really important, oh, look at me. People are like, who's this one guy, right? So it's always better for us as agency owners to get someone else to talk about us. It doesn't have to be a celebrity. It's whoever is well known in the niche that we want to serve. And you put it out there for a dollar a day. And if the engagement's good, if the video's good, if it's interesting, if it doesn't look like an ad, if it's a vertical video like I showed you, then you're going to have great results with the dollar a day strategy. Because people will say, wow, you know, Rashida is is super knowledgeable. I need to find out more about what she does because I know so-and-so, but I'd, I'd have never heard of, you know, Mitch, right? But who's this Mitch guy? I can see that he's with these other people. So you put a dollar a day out there to build your influence, to generate leads. You do it on any social network. It works the same way. You might have to spend a little bit more. Like on LinkedIn, you have to spend $10 a day instead of a dollar a day, right? Twitter, you can do a dollar a day. Facebook, you can do a dollar a day. Right now, TikTok requires $20 a day. But either way, it's the same thing because it's videos with the people that your community respects. And that's dollar a day. We've been doing it for 14 years. It works in every single industry. It doesn't matter whether you, you are a big or a small agency. The issue is not whether dollar a day works or how fancy you are with the campaign setup. It's do you have the content that's worth putting money behind? Because if it doesn't work organically, if people don't engage on it, if it's not interesting, if it looks like an ad, if you're using the wrong framework by starting out on saying who you are instead of entertaining and educating them first, if you do any of these things wrong, dollar a day is not going to work for you. I love to take whenever people say good things. Can I show you one more thing? Check this out. So the whole point of inception is that you want to co-create content with the most authoritative person in the vertical you want to serve. So if you're a real estate agent, Tom Ferry is probably the best known person in the industry. He's got 450,000 real estate agents, right? So we've we created this masterclass on digital marketing because we're teaching all these real estate agents digital marketing. So if I want to run a digital marketing agency for real estate agents, Tom Ferry is probably the lighthouse I want to choose. Okay, so we have this video oh, here, right? Data. And a bunch of people have seen it because we haven't started doing dollar a day against it. But if you look at the comments here, just in all of these guys are awesome, right? So Rashida's got a point here. She's smart. When she sees that other people are saying good things. So think about this for your stuff. How many times are there on Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn or after a conference or at, in a webinar, you hear somebody say, or actually in a client meeting, that's the best way. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, and you know, we had this win and they say, oh, that's amazing. And then you say, awesome, can I quote you on that? And they always say yes. And now you have, I'm not a lawyer, but you have legal consent, right? So you see this? All these people are saying, oh yeah, this is so good. This is the best training I've ever seen. This is so good, blah, 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 right? So any one of these, I can just take a screenshot of any one of them, or I could, I could just do the whole thing here. And now I've got a screenshot and I can post it as a story. I can put it on my page. I can go to wherever, right? Let's see, I gotta make sure I got the right one. Is this my page or a profile? Can you tell? So I'm gonna upload the screenshot I just took. This is what people had to say about the digital marketing masterclass with Tom Ferry. When you have Tom Ferry that, and you start to see the engagement that comes off of that, the you want to feed the algorithm the cleanest signal. So if I have Tom Ferry content, I want to have Tom Ferry as an interest. But if there's other people in my community, let's say I'm serving real estate agents, then who are the other folks that run software companies, that run coaching programs, that, that have large you know, brokerages, 
then yeah, I could target other people on my community. So you're right, Mitch, I can combine these things in different ways. But there I tagged his page and I didn't tag his profile because I don't want to be irritating. And by yeah. the way, what I'm showing here when I'm tagging other people, don't do the thing where you like tag 50 people. That's annoying, right? Awesome. So I would take a screenshot of this. Like if I could get all you guys to say, wow, it's amazing. And then I would I would take a screenshot and then I tag Flowster and then I boost it, right? You guys want to try that? So now <laughs> I made this and I can put this on any social network and I can boost it to Flowster. You know what? I'll just go to Twitter because that's the one I'm, I'm on a Twitter kick right now for the last year. So what should we say to a bunch of genius marketing agencies? You know what's the hardest thing to do is teaching marketing to marketers because they have a real high bar and they're super cynical, right? <laughs> You're like, ah, oh, this, this is another marketing expert. Great. You roll your eyes, right? So hopefully I'm showing you things that are worthwhile that you haven't seen, but are still valuable. All right, there we go. There's a tweet. The one with the blue check is me. On all the networks, the one with the blue check is me, except Instagram. They haven't given that to me yet. Want to see how our tweet is doing? It reaches a lot of people. Most of us that are busy business people don't have a lot of time for Twitter, but Here's where we use Twitter. Anything that will grab other pe people's attention that's newsworthy, or if they're a figurehead, but they're in news or media, they're on Twitter for sure. So it's the best way to gather mentions from other folks. So I'm not using Twitter because I'm trying to drive direct leads unless I'm using ads. But what will happen is, look at who's replying on my stuff. Like Darren Benson, he runs Utah DMC. Right, that's pretty awesome. John is engaging on my tweet. So you got a lot of people that are well known. I serve a lot of doctors. We've got agencies that serve doctors. I, I own a piece of a lot of different agencies, right? So you can see that this is a great way to get feedback from other people. How is this company? There's Alex Berman, right? The cold email king. So other people, I'm I'm looking at this to see who else is saying great things. David Ronitsky, right? He's founder of 3Q, right? They're a big digital agency. Keith Gill, right? Carl Bischoff, right? All, all of these guys here are engaging on my stuff. Oh, look, Brian Eisenberg, right? You guys are marketing, you know who he is. So Twitter's a great way to keep in touch with other leaders. And then when you have conversation, like Rashida said, you're gonna grab that screenshot, you're gonna honor them. And you, you like into Mitch's question, you don't have to boost it. You don't have to tag them. But if you're like me and it's something that's not douchey and it's fun and you want your community to see that, then why not boost it, right? It's not even an ad per se. It's just showing people that you're connected with the right people so that when maybe a couple months later you have some new product or you want to announce something, they remember who you are. So that puts you in a position of having a warm touch. If it is what we call a unicorn, meaning it's just doing super, super well, then we would put it into its new campaign. But it the easier thing to do is if you're just boosting right there on Twitter or boosting right there on Facebook, it creates its own campaign. So it'll naturally, the, the ones that you've seen me made today will naturally die after a week because I set it for seven days. If it's good, now put a dollar a day and extend it for another 30 days. Then I'll put $10 a day. We did a campaign with Infusionsoft, which is a, well, now they changed the name to Key. And we made a hundred different videos with their CEO eating fried chicken and I'm doing some different things to get people's attention or talk about small biz, talk about marketing automation and texting and landing pages and e-commerce and all that kind of stuff. And each of them, we put a dollar a day against it. And then, you know, those singing shows, what, what is it? American Idol or The Voice or whatnot, where they eventually there's like one winner, right? Because you have different brackets and they get eliminated along the way. So that's what we do all the time, or Final Four, whatever the, your favorite analogy is with the bunch of people that are competing and the crowd is voting to see you know, who wins. With that one with Infusionsoft, we spent $1.3 million on the top winner. But we didn't start out by saying, oh, here's a bunch of these videos, I think this is the winner. I didn't declare the winner. We let the algorithm declare the winner and whatever's doing well, we put more and more money and the one that won, we put $1.3 million against, right? So I'm just a big fan of data. I'm an idiot. I don't know what is the best thing. The system will just determine it for you. And then if it's great and it's evergreen content, just let that thing run forever, right? Mm -hmm. I've got ads that have been running for 10 years. Why not? 
less about Carl, which channel is more or less suited and more about what, where's, where are you more likely to find the audience that you want and be able to target or where there's an expectation of that kind of content. For example, Facebook is a general social network that will work for pretty much anything because it's so big, but they've taken away most of the detail targeting. So now the, the focus, the, the, the content is where your targeting is occurring, not because you're explicitly saying, I'm going to target these particular people. If you want to do explicit targeting, if you really want to hammer in like on B2B stuff or particular names or job titles or whatnot, then Twitter and LinkedIn are the best for the targeting. Because for some reason, Facebook and TikTok and these guys are getting in government scrutiny because of whatever. So they're like, you know, when there's a line of cars that are speeding and the cop will pull over the lead car, that's kind of Facebook. And all the other ones they kind of ignore. So Twitter's got fantastic targeting, but the government doesn't want to go after Twitter, right? Well, maybe they will with Elon. But if you want micro, micro targeting, it's going to be on Twitter and LinkedIn. If it's B2B, definitely do LinkedIn. LinkedIn's got a higher minimum. Twitter and LinkedIn are both kind of dumb in terms of being able to optimize. But you balance that because you can be very, very specific in who you target. TikTok is sort of a smarter version of Facebook because if you have good video, it even recognizes the background. It recognizes who's engaging on that video. It's the fastest learning AI in terms of the social networks. Pinterest, Snapchat, Reddit, Quora are kind of secondary social networks. You can apply the same technique, but there's a different angle that you have to apply. For example, the, the Quora and Reddit folks are more snarky. And if you do anything that smells like an ad, you, you'll just get canceled. You can get away with this sort of thing on Facebook and almost on Twitter, depending on who your audiences are. But I'd ask you, Carl, where is your audience? And that's going to prioritize what networks you go after. I look at my calendar and I see who I'm with and I'm going to make content with these people. So tomorrow I'm flying to Chicago to be with Perry Marshall. And we've been working the last six months on a TikTok ads course. We've already written the book, already gotten tons of examples, spent money. TikTok's had, you know, they changed the interface. So now we got to redo a whole bunch of things, right? But we're going to make a bunch of impromptu-ish, one-liner, 15-second and one-minute videos that we're going to run as TikToks, Instagram Reels, that kind of thing. So we know thematically what we're going to be talking about, but we don't know the exact words. And this goes back to, should you script out what you're saying word for word? You'll see people on either side of this. My answer is no. You should have the bullet points, the key points that you want, but the exact words you use, you should just let that come from you and come from whoever it is that you're making content with. Because if you script it, it's not going to sound as natural. And plus, it just takes way too much effort. And I'd rather just know what the framework is. Just like if you're giving a speech, don't write it out word for word. So I have a lot of stuff that looks spontaneous, but it's actually planned out. Like you're going to see Jake Paul and I have a bunch of content coming out hopefully next month and it looks unscripted but i spent a year working on this script at his request if it's scripted looking it looks like an ad right and the minute it looks like an ad you're dead in in b2b there's kind of a low end you know soho b2b and then there's an enterprise billion dollar marketing automation you know buying sap kind of stuff so we've done campaigns for nike and starbucks and microsoft we built the marketing on, or not the marketing animation, we, we built the Facebook ads and digital lead gen campaigns for Marketo, right? Which is a, a multi-billion dollar marketing automation company. And that kind of content, of course, is not going to be as much silly content. We made some silly content with Jason Miller and Maria Pergolino, who is a CMO, but the majority of that at that professional level, where you have companies that are spending six figures on software implementation is kind of like podcast, how to professional speaker conference level stuff. And because Marketo, before they were acquired, was seen as the leader in marketing automation, and they were able to attract the top people in marketing automation to come to their conference and also be clients, we would take snippets of these folks talking about how they're using Marketo, talking not even Marketo necessarily, but about how they were able to become VP of marketing at a Fortune 100 company. And so by putting those kinds of tips out there, 
because that's the expectation if you're working with Marketo, right? Or stuff with Nike, there's a higher level of production value that you'd expect. So there's a lot of coordination, there's more agencies that are involved. We can't just put random stuff out there on Nike's Twitter, right? We get fired if we did stuff like that. So there's a different expectation. So think about what you would expect from that particular brand that's a client. What would they expect from Rashid, right? And just create content that would seem to fit that mold. Probably the best tip I can give you that people don't say is create behind the scenes content. So in the, a day in the life of Rashida, what does that look like? Who is she with? What kinds of things is she talking about? What kinds of expertise does she have? What's her favorite drink at Starbucks? You know, what, what does she like to do for fun? Just not voyeuristic, creepy sorts of things, but other things so that people feel like they're friends with you, right? And you can decide how personal you want to make that. And when you're doing this with clients, let's say you have a particular client in a B2B niche, and I'll give you an example. So we have Tommy Mello. So he's the number one home services business in the United States. And so all these other home service businesses follow him. He runs the home service millionaire podcast. He's got a book, he's got all these things, right? So pictures and videos of he and I hanging out and lifting weights and playing golf and talking about our favorite Italian restaurants is the kind of stuff that's not Tommy talking about how do you hire more techs or how he did a hundred million dollars last year or this. It, it's not, we still have stuff like that too. But I find the content that works the best is those kind of casual-ish moments where people can see you building connections and you're, you're good friends, not just like you randomly approach the person at a conference and want to take a picture with them while you both are wearing badges showing that you're at the conference. No, that, that creates zero trust because you don't know that person and everyone can tell in that picture you don't know that person, right? How many people have taken a selfie with Gary Vaynerchuk? Come on, right? That doesn't count. So show those, those moments of connection. That's what you're trying to do because then all the other people that respect that person you're creating content with will say, oh, Rashida's with so-and-so. I never, I know so-and-so, but Rashida must be legit because we can see that they're having a meal together or they're doing a little five minute Zoom podcast or what have you. Let's see, Michelle says, is the dollar a day method just for branding and getting your name out there versus driving sales? It's for any step in the funnel. It can be for remarketing. It can be for a client love and ongoing. I, I can show you different ways to, to do that. It, it can drive leads. Dollar a day is not just for driving brands, but the quality of the content that you have to have is increasingly more difficult the further down the funnel you go, because it has to have more authority. Because the whole point of dollar a day is videos, short little videos that you boost out there. You can use it as remarketing in different stages in your funnel. You can do it against a lookalike or against people who are followers of so-and-so. So Michelle, you should check out what we did in the first 10 minutes. We like to use what's natively available because that gives us the organic performance and also the feedback to be able to do community management and comment back. So for those of us that are agencies, we know that it's not that somebody saw a video of me and Grant Cardone and then all of a sudden want to sign up for our various programs and whatnot. No, they're going to ask a question and so when you're there and you're handling questions in the comments or in the DMs, those are what turn into clients and customers and this kind of thing. So the looking at it natively in the tool, I think is always going to be better. And whoever's running the ad should understand how to write the copy and also be able to reply to some of those people there. So you need really well-trained virtual assistants to do that. Not people who are just going to mindlessly put stuff out there. And I'm a software engineer. I build software. I don't think the world of software is there. And I have, I'm on the board of a bunch of these marketing automation companies and they're just, they do a lot of the great things like bid automation and reporting and white labeling. But this kind of stuff I think requires a human still. In 2022, it still requires a human. AI copywriting, yeah, you saw Google's announcement <laughs> saying that that is not okay and they will implement manual penalties. So, right. I. I spent a whole day with Dave Roganmesser playing golf in Austin. His thing was called conversion. 
at AI, then Jarvis, and then they changed their name to Jasper because they got sued by Marvel and Disney. And there's a lot of other tools that will do the same thing. Copy.ai, you know, Copysmith, and Alex Berman just launched his new thing called Taplio, which is the same. I have access to GPT-3 too, by the way. All these guys that are doing AI copyright, anything with words and AI, the dirty little secret is they're all licensing this commercial version of GPT-3 which you pay X cents per word. So I have a license to that too. So I could launch a competitor if I wanted to, but they're friends of mine, so I don't want to do that. That's why they all look the same and they all behave the same. So by the way, yes, use those for landing pages and whatnot, but be careful if you use that for SEO because it could get you in trouble. Because if Google implements a manual penalty, they could do it across all your content. If they can spot the AI and maybe they can, maybe they can't. It's a cat and mouse game. The Pandora's box has been opened on that. If you want to look at what we think are the best tools here, <clears throat> I created this video for Digital Marketer on the Content Factory. So if you just search Digital Marketer Content Factory, you'll see hey this. Hey guys, Dennis, you were here at Digital Marketer today. And I draw out this whole thing on the whiteboard. Library, and that's how. So you can see, here's where I think this whole set of tools fits together. So it can be Descript and it, Jarvis or Jasper or whatever, you know, design R for books. If you're a pro, you might use you know, Premiere and After Effects for video editing. We like WordPress. There's a lot of things that fit in the WordPress, like LearnDash and Memberium, whatever your marketing automation tool is. I happen to like Infusionsoft, so therefore we use Memberium for joining the tags between what we get in our learning management system and in our marketing automation system. Anyway, there's lots of these different tools. And I think that there's just right now, there's no way of getting around needing to have like 15 or 20 tools. It sucks. I wish there was an all in one sort of tool. The closest I see is Descript, which replaces Loom, but it doesn't replace Zoom. It replaces Camtasia and ScreenFlow and these other ones. It replaces Autodesk AI and Anyway, I don't want to go into all the different tools. Everyone's got their favorite tools, but the point is all of us as agency owners need to have what I call a content factory, which is the input of the content that's collected from mentions, from Zoom calls, from you making videos, from your phone, from webinars, that moves into the editing phase, which I like, Descript, then moves into the distribution phase, which is posting. Some people call that repurposing. And then the last stage is amplification, which is putting money against it or sharing stuff for collecting testimonials or you know sending out gifts right to amplify the thing that you have but i believe all of us should have those four stages and i have this 150 page guide called the content factory that shows exactly how we do it and how all the vas do it all the stuff is being done by the vas we have an army of vas and i'd love to see you guys implement right uh, we often you know all of us as speakers will share stuff and people say wow that was really cool but then and I'm looking for that. I'm not looking to try to, you know, get people to give me compliments, but I want people to implement. So I want you to like one thing you'll find that that you haven't done before, or one idea, and I want to see you take action on the one thing, not 28 different things, but just one thing. And then if you find that at works, let me know. Or if you find you've built a process around that, I'd love to hear it. Like Mitch, with your process, I'd love to see that. I'm a big fan of process. Awesome. Well, thank you, everybody. Reach out to me if you have any questions. Love to help you out. Thank you so much, Floster and friends. This has been really cool.